So I'm here with Scott Wilgerson from ECI and we're going to talk about the transport network requirements in 5G. So Scott, I mean we could be here for a day talking about this, but if we yeah, could how much pick, stories do you have? That's right. <laughs> if we could pick three key things to talk about in terms of what kind of questions operators should be asking themselves about the transport network requirements of 5G, what would they be? What would the first one be? I think the first one would probably be when. Um, right. When should we be doing it? Yesterday, what? maybe? Uh, right, oh. exactly. <laughs> uh, because the question always comes up of when are the 5G radios going to be available? When is the 5G endpoint going to be there? What's the first application? When should we get these things out there? And we're seeing announcements around the world of the initial 5G trials, um, but they're mainly from very large carriers and they're mostly trials right. uh, around things like the Olympics. So the question then, if you are a, a, just an operator and you are a little bit further down the line, when do I need to start building this backhaul network and this front hall network and everything else that goes around it? What we like to tell people is that uh, a lot of the things that are being done at 5G apply to 4G. Um, if you're still building a 4G optical network, start looking at 5G requirements today. So right. if you're starting to build out anything at all in terms of backhaul, you should be looking at what the 5G requirements are, even if the 5G radios aren't going to get to you until 2020 or 2021. Right. Uh, start doing it now. So I think the number one thing that people are going to be asking is when. Okay. And then what, I guess, is the next <laughs> thing. So those 5G requirements are what, you know, what kind of things they, do the operators need to think about? Right. So everyone likes to talk about 5G being driven more by applications than by technology. Um, there's the famous triangle of uh, is it going to be a higher performance or lower latency or more bandwidth and the reality is 5G needs to be all of those things to, to do all the things that we want 5G to be. Right. So that's the, re the requirements you've got to start looking at is in the past you could just build a lot of bandwidth out to remote points and bring it all back to a central location. Um, when you start talking about lower latency and more compute you've got to start looking at a network that's a little flatter, yeah. uh, less complex, um, has the ability, for example, 5G radios have a signaling protocol that needs to route between cell sites. Uh, so you're going to have to have routing capabilities and switching capabilities further out into the network. That's the what. That's what makes it harder. That's what makes the, the 5G backhaul network look different from just a traditional 4G network. And you've got to start thinking about that now. Okay. And the third main, I mean, we could have a very long <laughs> list, but the third thing that may be the third important thing to consider, cost um, always comes into yeah, it. Yeah, cost. But... I was going to say who and you should buy from us. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, cost is always a big issue because uh, all of these things we're talking about can be built today using the technology we have today. Right. Um, but you've got to sort of pick your battles. There are some places where, yes, you want to do the full spectrum of capabilities on day one. There are other places that you may not have that capability, the need for all those capabilities on day one um, because the cost may be a little too high. And you've got to figure out how are you going to serve those areas uh, at the cost points that are available. Is it going to be new technology? Are you going to take existing technology and extend it? That's where this all gets really interesting. Um, some cases, the business case is easy. Um, a, a dense area where you've got 5G fixed wire, wireless access on a certain, for a certain number of customers, right. businesses involved, that's, that's pretty easy. But that's going, to be, that's going to be a tiny percentage of 5G though, isn't it? Most of it is going to be a lot more complex than that. I would imagine eventually once we figure out how to do it, it's going to be very, very complex. Okay. So the conclusion is that there's an awful lot to figure out for everybody involved in the ecosystem, whether supply, build, manage. Absolutely, uh, and it depends on who you talk to about it. If you talk to people who are doing, the, the, the guys who are doing the supply, you talk, mentioned supply, the ones who are actually going out there and installing it and putting it in places, there's a whole new set of things they have to learn. They're not building right. big towers anymore. Now they've got to figure out how to go in every mile or so and put a radio up and make sure that it goes to the right places. Um, we start talking about the people who are doing um, the optics behind it. Now we've got to talk about, start talking about how do you get fiber to all of those locations. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you do microwave as backhaul for part of it? How do you make those interoperate together? Does it have to be SDN? Uh, when you have multiple services running, how do you do the slicing? Um, are you going to do it the optical layer? Probably not. You'll probably do most of it the electrical layer. Okay. Now where do you find the expertise to do that? And how do you monitor those to make sure all those work? Now the operations guys have got to figure that out. When someone calls up and asks for a service, how do you make sure it goes on the right place at the right time? It's all very, very complicated, which is exciting, because if it wasn't complicated, they wouldn't pay us to do it. Right, absolutely. Well, I mean, it's clear from the light reading perspective that the optical requirements of 5G is a massive topic that everybody's still trying to, to figure out. So I'm sure we'll catch up again soon and find out maybe what things developed, but probably we'll find out what more questions there are that need to be answered. I imagine so, yeah. yes. Scott, thanks very much. Thanks very much, appreciate it.